Okay, two points that net. Um, that's the studio that I founded together with Lupi. Um, Lupi and me, we are not alone. We have an um, we are with Elio uh, on the bottom right in Barcelona. So we are based in, in Hamburg, Germany, and Barcelona, Spain. Um, this is our happy place. So uh, two points that net from the start was always um, in between the pillars of learning, teaching, and applying. Um, right now, we are very much interested in coding, software, motion design, augmented reality, um, artificial intelligence. And we teach uh, regularly since 2006. Um, we taught until two weeks ago at the KBK uh, in The Hague um, and still um, in Barcelona as well at the Ali Saba. And then everything that we learned um, as well through teaching, we apply at two points. And we are building um, a website, which should be like a quite uh, complete or should become a quite a complete uh, archive of flexible visual systems. Okay, I was asked today uh, to talk about flexible visual systems, the book. Um, but before I start to show images of the book, I want to uh, give you a little bit background um, where these ideas are coming from. So I graduated from the Royal Academy of Art in, of the Hague uh, in the 2000s. And if you lived through the 2000s, then you probably were aware as well that something happened, uh, something changed during that time. And it was this time where we saw popping up a lot of different terms that try to describe a new different kind of identity. Um, before it all has been uh, designing logos and then a couple of assets. Um, and then they were applied to different deliverables. And then new terms started to pop up. Generative identities, dynamic identities, liquid identities, fluid identities, evolving identities, living identities. Um, they had different background stories like generative identities. They were inspired um, by generative art, uh, liquid identities by the... Uh, theory of Sigmund Baumann, of the liquid society, but it wasn't really clear if there are really different types of identities. So me as a recently graduated student or not student anymore, but beginner, I was very confused during that time. Um, but I, it was clear that something happened. It was going from logo to system design because the system was able to do more things. Um, the logo basically is just one symbol, it's one message, but the system is a language that is able to express many different messages. So we had this paradigm shift from symbol to language, if we look at the function of a visual identity or the tools of it. And we had to change from static to flexible because more and more the websites were important, the devices on which we were looking at the different identities um, became more uh, important. Um, so we had this yeah, change from static to flexible. Um, this confusion, but also my interest in systems led me to move from uh, North Europe to South Europe to Barcelona and start a first master and then PhD in uh, design research. And I wanted to ask, uh, I wanted to research the questions, how do flexible visual systems work? Um, it seemed always like very intuitive how they develop the different identities. And I wanted to know if there are like different types and functionalities. Um, so before I started to make case studies of recent um, visual identities, I started to uh, analyze um, bibliographical uh, sources and these are the diagrams that I made uh, from authors like Wusio Swong, um, um, but as well Bertin, a cartographer, French cartographer. Um, yeah, different authors, mostly from the 70s. Um, they were designing in a different time, so it didn't really um, work for me. But I tried to take what I could get from them, and it was comparing functionalities and terminology. And then I started to uh, make case studies and use this analytical model as well to analyze uh, recent uh, new 
uh, visual identities. And it became so complex that my tutor told me that this is not how an analytical mo model should work, that this actually doesn't help anyone. This is, doesn't make sense. This is just a like a one-to-one a, a -one map of reality. This is a, too complex and a model should simplify to ex be able to express something. So I simplified um, the models that I made to something very simple. And this is the, the model. Um, there are systems that are based on form and systems that are based on transformation. Um, I'm going to explain now what this actually means. So a system based on form, um, as you can imagine, works with different kinds of shapes um, and in their combination um, and permutation, you get different constellations and different images. So an example would be from the Design Studio Uncommon, the Coventry, uh, Coventry City project from 2020. Uh, and you see here a very simple grid and um, a couple of rules, like um, which colors to use, how small you can divide the modules, what kind of elements do you use. And now uh, motion has become as well part of the visual identity design. So the rules for the motion design are an integral part as well of the visual system, which 20 years ago wasn't the case. Um, and now we come to a very interesting, um, the, the, the second type of uh, system, which is very interesting to me. And um, just like an anecdote, I made this book actually for graphic designers that do visual identities. But what was really interesting to see is that actually a lot of people from Creative Coding bought this book and they really could relate to the content of the book which was really interesting to me because obviously, I mean, I see the connection and everything is logical and could be coded, but I'm not a very good coder myself. So I was, I was surprised. Um, so yeah, um, about the system based on transformation, um, while the system based on form works with actual objects, the system based on transformation designs a process that generates different kinds of images. And the source of the image is actually not that important anymore. Here, I took um, a typography and I just put it on a scanner and then I moved the typography on the scanner. So it deformed in this way. But you could imagine that if I take a photography or if I take um, anything, an object, uh, after a while, you would see the, the common thread in between the different images and you would recognize the language of the scanner and the the, the, the stuff that you're scanning are, is not that important anymore for the recognition. It's going to be the process, how you generate these images. As an example for this kind of system, um, this is um, for OVG from Rejane Dalbello when she was still working uh, at Studio Dumba. And you see here that um, taking something static like this logo and then throwing it or projecting it over an object. Um, this is digitally made, but um, distorting it in that way um, allows you to, to generate different kinds of images. Um, yeah, and then the, the big frustration or disappointment. I, I worked uh, on this dissertation on this PhD for 10 years. Um, I mean, if I'm, if I'm honest, I wasn't just doing the PhD. I also had in between two kids and I wanted to see them, be there for them. Then we had the studio with Lupi, but it took me 10 years. And then um, I think no, well, like maybe 10 people read my PhD. So I thought I have to make something a little bit more practical, something that everybody can use. And I made this book. Um, which is out since last uh, autumn. And there's an introduction where I talk about um, different, um, well, um, subjects in, um, that are important when you uh, work in visual identity design, but in general as well about how you organize design teams, different articles. And then there's one chapter, chapter one, about uh, flexible uh, visual systems based on form. And 
the um, it's structured like this. So you have uh, I always start with a basic element, and then I cut it in uh, a couple of parts, so it's easier to combine with other elements. Um, I make a component out of it by having a couple of rules, like mirroring it or rotating it. And then I do stuff with it, like lines, frames, patterns, um, or labels. And uh, I put typography on it to um, make out of this component a symbol, like a, a logo, a profile, picture, or whatever it is, or just tools for designing like assets. Um, I even show some typographic solutions. So how you could with the same kind of element, uh, you see here that I'm just working with a quarter circle. Um, I can make typography, I can make lettering out of this. And, um, and actually very quickly as well, change the style of the letter by just changing the basic components. And then there always has to be a rule how to apply these elements. Um, so you could stretch it or you just could repeat it. And then there's there's the second chapter um, about transformation. And there I'm just describing different processes, what you could do um, with either graphic elements or with topography or with images, um, like rotating them um, or um, yeah, or repeating them, just like different processes. And to make this, I mean, this should just like exemplify different methods, how you could work. And to make this a little bit more concrete, I show you an example of uh, two points um, where we used a similar approach. So this is um, an exhibition uh, in Barcelona, Black Light it's called, uh, and it was showcasing um, psychedelic art from the 50s. And um, so we took it quite literal. So we made a representation of a light, which is like going from white to black. Then we invert this because the exhibition is called black light. Uh, we, because the images that they show, they have shown us the curators, um, there were, mm, yeah, a lot of them were looking very much like uh, op art, line art things. We turned this into lines. And then we just cut them in quarter circles. So we are able to create new things out of it. A circle is quite a closed uh, form and it's difficult to combine or make new things out of it. Just like by cutting it in four pieces, there are more options of combining in different ways. Um, then we got our good friend, uh, Tim Rodenbrecker to, um, to design us a, um, a tool uh, or to code us a tool in um, uh, processing, but later as well in P5.js. So as a web-based um, tool as well, the potential uh, future audience of the exhibition could make their own designs. And we made a competition out of it. People could upload their designs to their social media profiles and then uh, could win something like a bag or something. Um, but we also made a font out of it. So here, the things that we see here, all the letters that you see here, they're all built with the same components. And it's just a quarter circle and, um, and a straight line to connect uh, a couple of letters. Um, and because this is a very simple setup, uh, it's also super easy to make a variable font out of it. So this is just the two masters um, uh, interpolating in between each other. And now I'm going to show you a couple of images of the um, uh, project. So you see here that we applied this quarter circle then um, and made a pattern out of it. Uh, we made lines out of it. Um, we made these forms out of it. And uh, to limit our options or to have already a system for the way how we design the digital builds is very helpful, especially for small studios uh, like us. Uh, like this, it's, it's a huge project in whole Barcelona there everywhere is, will be your design if you design for a museum in Barcelona. So in order to be able to manage this with just three persons is having clear rules how to design. And, and this is 
what the system actually makes possible. Wayfinding system, banners in the street, the whole street is filled with these banners. Three minutes, okay. I'm rushing now to, okay. So this is then the last project that I'm going to show. What's important to understand, and this is the trick of the book as well, is that you could look at the book and you could think, okay, I could do the identity that I want to do exactly like this. But the idea of the book is that uh, functionalities keep the same in many projects, if you look at the projects, but the aesthetics can change a lot. So I'm taking here now as the last part to show you um, Center for Complexity, which has the exact same setup. So it's also quarter circles, um, but the aesthetics are changing a lot. So just to give you um, half second uh, explanation what this is. Center for Complexity is a lab of uh, Rhode Island School of Design, a research lab. And um, it's super interesting what they're doing. They're researching uh, yeah, real project and want to, it's like uh, real life activism as well, using uh, design uh, thinking and um, system thinking. So every project of them that they research is very different. So we wanted as well for them just to have a container which they, fill, they can fill with very different forms. So for every project, they can have a different font. And you see here that we fill this container um, with very different fonts. And as these are also components, we can generate uh, very quickly lots of different kinds of fonts. And this is then how we um, applied this uh, templates for moving posters, also very easy to change because it's just a font. Posters. And that's it, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes, did I get it? <laughs>